Good day. Welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators, being brought to you in part by Once Came You Podcast, the Massachusetts Lodge Research, and the Masonic Historical Preservation Society. Today we're here at Cambridge, Massachusetts, at the Cambridge Masonic Temple. And today, it's one of the episodes, we're going to present to you Masonic chairs. Now, I know chairs are rather large, they're heavy, and they can be expensive, but with the amount of Masonic lodges that have merged or closed over the last number of decades and the number of buildings that have been sold, these pieces are now coming onto the market. I know it's also sad to say that a number of the Masonic lodges that have moved out of their buildings have left pieces like this behind in the abandoned buildings. So these are great pieces of history. Uh, today we have three. They're all from the revival style of furniture uh, from that time period, we have 1860, 1864, and 1865. I'm joined here today by Worshipful Luciano, who is a past master and the current secretary of Mount Olivet Lodge, and he will be presenting Mount Olivet's chair. But first, we're going to start off with Amber Gamble's chair. This chair here dates from 1860. Um, it is from Amicable Lodge. Amicable Lodge was founded in 1805. It is the oldest Masonic Lodge here in Cambridge. In 1860, the Lodge had rented a large hall in an area of Cambridge called Central Square or Cambridge Court. And upon renting this hall, they purchased an entire set of furnishings. Three officers' chairs, secretary and treasurer's desk, benches, altar, pedestals, this chair here was refurbished a number of years ago. Um, it was done beautifully over, and the coloring of the upholstery, the burgundy or red, is typical of that time period. Um, I have seen the velvet done in red, blue, and in green. And I believe this is the original color of this chair. Now, we don't have any records, unfortunately, on the company that we purchased these chairs from all the furnishings. Uh, it may have been the Shaw Furniture Company of Cambridge, but we're not sure. Um, we are very proud because we still use this chair today in our small lodge. And we still have a number of these pieces in our collection. We have a master's chair, the warden's chairs, a couple of the officer's chairs, a couple of benches. We have the three pedestals and the secretary and treasurer's desk, which was also refurbished a few years ago. Um, so we're really happy to have these items in our collection. Now, here is Lou, and he's going to talk about Mount Olivet's chair. This chair belonged to Mount Olivet Lodge and was purchased along with other pieces in 1864. Mount Olivet Lodge was founded in historic Harvard Square in 1863. In 1864, Mount Olivet entered into a contract with the then Union, Ra uh, Union Railway, a horse-drawn trolley system from um, Harvard Square to Boston. They built a new station on Dunster Street in Harvard Square, and Mount Olivet had a number of rooms in this building for almost 20 years. The lodge, was per uh, the lodge purchased a full set of furniture for the new lodge room. We do not know whom or what company we purchased the set from, as records do not indicate the manufacturer. It has been, reup it has been reupholstered since that time, and the chair still used from time to time by the lodge. We are fortunate today to have the master's chair, the altar, two officer's chairs, and three pedestals that came with this set. It's rather unusual as the chair reclines on a 10% slope backwards, but sitting in this chair is very comfortable. Now, for those who might be tuning in, thinking that we're talking about Masonic chairs and we're going to have the uh, mysterious, mystic powers that come with these chairs, because I have read a number of different blogs and postings over the years, I hate to disappoint you, but there is no mysterious, mystical powers that come with sitting in the chair. Uh, I've sat in these chairs for over 15 years in various Masonic bodies. I still cannot levitate. I have not received any great wealth. And as many of my Masonic friends will indicate, as well as my beautiful wife will testify, I have gained no intelligence whatsoever <laughs> by sitting in these chairs. So, um, if someone tells you that when you see these up for sale that 
They have great, mysterious, mystical powers. It's a bunch of malaki. I can say malaki, yes? <laughs> it's a bunch of malaki. Um, so it's just a chair. Next is this beautiful piece. This came to us a number of years ago by auction. I was able to pick it up about uh, 30 years ago. Uh, there were two other chairs with this set. I was only able to purchase the master's chair. This chair dates to 1865 and it was given by uh, Brother uh, Messenger uh, to Wyoming Lodge in Melrose. Now you may have remembered a number of episodes ago I presented uh, stereo view cards from the interior of the Melrose Masonic Temple. Uh, the furniture that is in that photograph or on those stereo view cards are still there today. This chair here, along with a few other other pieces, may have been used in one of the smaller large rooms. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It has not been restored over the years. It is all original. Uh, it came in the green velvet. Uh, it also came with the fringe that is on the arms, which was typical of the upholstery of that day. I believe it is done in walnut. Uh, the header or top piece is all hand carved. It is done in three pieces and put together. Uh, like the amicable chair, it does have sit lux et lux fute, if I say my Latin correctly, which I believe translates as the, there is light and let there be light, or something similar to that. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It does need a little bit of work. Uh, it has been abused over the years a little bit in transit and in storage, but still they're great pieces uh, of what I consider Masonic art. So I'm here with Lou, we're here at Cambridge, and we want to thank you very much.